All right, so your boy Dabo Sweeney's at it again. And, and, you know, I don't know why this guy's got to be a victim all the time, but he is. And it's just like, you know, dude, why you're not a victim, bro. Nobody, no, no one feels sorry for you. Let's just get into it. He says, uh, I'm all, this is on the Always College Football Podcast with uh, <clears throat> Greg McElroy. He says, I'm all for, this is Dabo. He says, I'm all for great, uh, expanding the playoff. Great. I got no problem with it. Of course, a couple of years ago, he said he wasn't, he wasn't into it, but whatever. He says, I got no problem with it, but I want to do it in a way that's healthy for the player. Uh, what bothers me about expansion of the playoff is when all of this was coming about a few years ago, we were given a charge by our commissioner, talking about the ACC commissioner, talk to the team. Hey, this is what's coming down. The we want to know feedback. So this is what Dabo says the, uh, the Clemson players said. He says, I'll never forget it. I kind of laid it all out for him, said, uh, they looked at me like I was crazy, like I had three eyeballs. But, bro, that this is me talking now, bro. That just might be the way they look at you sometimes, man, with your, with your sanctimonious routine. <clears throat> they looked at me and said, uh, I mean, you mean to tell me we got to start in July and we're going to finish later in January? Oh, and we, we just beat Alabama, and now we've got to go play Georgia next week. Or you just beat Ohio State, Alabama, and now you got to go play Georgia. I mentioned the dogs a couple of times. Uh, there are guys who have pro aspirations, and until you've been through a season of 15 games at this level, it's hard to have that really have that perspective. The interesting thing about the whole dynamic to me is when, when it was coming back, I just gave – I just gave the feedback, but nobody listened. Nobody listened to poor little Dabo. Uh, we listened to the players on all these things. No, you don't. And when I say no, you don't. College football doesn't listen to the players at all. Give me a break. Uh, it, it goes to say um, we listen to the player on all these things, but when it comes to they do not want to start the season earlier in July, they do not want to go into January. Oh, finals, who cares? Uh, yeah, because y'all are just all about academics. I mean, all you college coaches, all you care about are academics. Shut up. Uh, I didn't uh, give me a break. Uh, it all just falls on deaf ears. I'm like, why can't we? We can't just keep the expanding play, explaining the college football playoff now. Where you are, you're going to play 17 games. That's a lot for a college player. And then he, he goes on to say, that's one of the problems. We're trying to be the NFL with 131 teams. We're trying to be the NFL with college athletes, and I get beat up for this all the time. I don't care. You get beat up because some of the stuff you say is stupid, frankly. Uh, he goes on to say, the biggest thing is governance. I would blow it up. It's not relevant anymore. Talking about the NCAA, honestly, it was never really great. Great hot take, bro. Everybody hates the NCAA. You are the NCAA. The schools, the schools are the NCAA. What, do people understand these things? Like, really, honestly, no, this is not directed at Dabo. Are people this dumb? The National Collegiate Athletic Association. You are the NCAA. It's not a cabal out to get people. It's y'all. Y'all are the NCAA. It's you. It is Clemson. It is Georgia. It is Alabama. It is everyone. It's Coker. It's what it is. What is so hard about this? Uh, yeah, whatever. It was never great. But we're at a point now where it's just dysfunctional. Nobody could uh, could operate a business, no one, the way we operate in college football, uh, which is, a, well, it is a business, though, bro. I mean, like, this is what it is. <laughs> I, I just, this guy, I mean, like, you know, God bless him. He, he just, I, 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 I don't know what to say after a while because he's always mad about something. You know, he's like your, your he's like your mad uncle, you know, and like you got to play Alabama and then Georgia. I mean, but this is what the SEC, you know, welcome to the SEC, bitch. This is what that would be for y'all. You would be playing them back to back, you know, you would go from Georgia. Okay. So Georgia's close to the season was LSU. Ohio State, and then Texas Christian, right, in the national championship game. Boom, boom, boom. What was I don't get I mean, what, like, that doesn't happen all the time, but it happens in the playoff. The, the fact is, if we're being if we're being completely honest, Looking backwards on Clemson's situation coming into the, the the very good run they had, the the great run they had, you know, in fifteen they played Oklahoma. I was at that game. You know, Oklahoma was probably the best team they played in the semifinals. Because I'm trying to think of it. Well, Alabama in the, se- the season later, but they lost that game. No, excuse, that's not right. Excuse me, <coughs> Alabama. 
and then they skunked Ohio State. And the season later, they played Alabama and lost in the semis. The season after that, played Notre Dame, who was just not good in 2018. Uh, in 19, they survived Ohio State. That was, that was probably the second best team they played. And then uh, in 20, they lost to Ohio State. So it's not like, you know, I wouldn't say they had back-to-back tough ones. And I, I wouldn't say necessarily Georgia did either. And well, in 17, they had obviously back-to-back tough ones with Oklahoma and then, and then Alabama. But Clemson doesn't play a lot of tough games. And, and they get fully triggered. Talk about that. I mean, when you look at Clemson's close to this past season, you know, they lost to South Carolina and they lost to Tennessee. You know, they're, 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 I don't know what their record was outside the ACC, but I, I, my, my math tells me it was three and three. It's not real good. You know, lately, lately, you know, they're, they're obviously not what they were. But this guy is so uh, – he, he really it, – it, it's hard to like him, right? And, you know, it's hard to, like, be like – and, and, and a lot of people behind the scenes just roll their eyes about him. I'm not talking about people at Georgia. Uh, they do that too, but it's everywhere in college football. They're like, that guy is just amazing. And, <clears throat> you know, what I would say is we all have choices. And, you know, Dabo may mean this in the right way. He might. I don't know. But it's, it's hard. It's hard when – you know, he has become a very wealthy person and is constantly complaining about the thing he's become wealthy at. You know, I've been in, you know, I built my business from scratch. I've been doing this for 23 years. I've been critical of the media relatively consistently in my time. That is not, uh, it is not a political thing. It's just, you know, there's stuff that we could do better. There's stuff that people that cover Georgia should and could do better. There's stuff that I could do better. But w- with him, it's like, and, and I guess Kirby does it too. He just doesn't do it to this level. Uh, I, don't, I don't, nobody in college football is just like, ah, oh, this guy is just, what is this guy doing right now? The, the playoffs going to expand. That's what it is. It, 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 they've been signaling. This has been signaled for a long time. Why? Why are we expanding? Well, we're expanding to make more money. That's what it is. If you don't like that, it's great for you to voice that. If you have a problem with making more money, maybe being the head coach at Clemson is not the right move for you. You know, and I mean that in all, all due respect. Like, maybe you're making too much money. Maybe, maybe. The playoff expanding is, you know, and putting more money at Clemson is not a good thing. Maybe there's other stuff that we could be doing, you know, I, I don't know. But we we don't listen to the players about anything. You're, you're not fooling me with that, okay? We don't listen to the players and oh, by the way, when is it, you're critical of your own organization, Clemson is the NCAA. Georgia is the NCAA. Tech, Tennessee, Texas, whoever. It's your organization. If the ACC doesn't like it or Clemson, then get, you know, it's really, it's really, a, it's not Clemson. It, it, you know, if you want to make change, make change. Make change. I mean, you're one of the most powerful voices in college football. And you're going around and around chasing your tail with all this stuff. You sounded like an idiot in 2020 about the COVID stuff. You just sounded completely lost uh, with what you were saying uh, at the time. You know, there's no shortage of stupidity that comes from Dabo Swinney. There's none. There's no shortage. And as smug as all these college coaches are, I don't know if there's any more smug than you, bro. I don't. And I got to live with in-laws that love y'all. They're, they're kind of tired of you right now, to be honest with you, because you're getting your ass whipped uh, in games that matter. But everybody's tired of the routine. Just 
y'all don't really care about the players. If you really cared about the players, it'd be a totally different conversation than some of the crazy stuff you've said in the past. You specifically. Okay. If, if, if the schools really cared about the players, they'd have paid them years ago. Kirby Smart would have been paid as a player. So don't give me that shit. Okay. Don't give me that shit. You want a coach like you're talking about in some fantasy land? We will hire you at Coker. You can come be the, you can come be, the, you can start the football program, man. And, and you can just, you know, you can just guide young men or whatever fantasy we're living in now. You know, if it ain't about the money, of course it's about the money, bro. It's always about the money. John Draper, that's what the money's for. This is capitalism, man. We're in America. This is capitalism, bro. And and, and, the, and I understand the Clemson people being all for him because he's done so much for them. He has. He has he has made them f- so far from irrelevant. I mean, I re- I remember the nineties. I remember the two thousands. I remember well, I mean, I remember a double getting his ass whipped by South Carolina five years in a row. I remember that. He changed that. He did. Okay. But this all this other stuff, bro, you got to chill, man. Like, and the problem is you're the king. And that that's the problem with kings. Is they just start doing crazy stuff and like people this isn't crazy, but I'm not gonna compare him to some of the other people that have been kings in college football, but we can't have kings. You know, we cannot have kings. We have to have accountability. And I don't know who the athletic director is at South Car- at uh, excuse me, at Clemson. And then that's again, who's the governor of South Carolina? I bet y'all don't know. It's Henry McMaster, right? I I guarantee you, you know who the head coach at Clemson is. I guarantee you, y'all know who the South Carolina head coach is. And he says some crazy stuff too. Maybe it's just in the water in South Carolina. I don't know. But like y'all, nobody's out to get y'all. And and like y'all talking about you, you players, then pay, then take some of your happy money, your your nine million. If you're if you're worried about player well being, and donate half of it to Clemson. Half of it this this coming year. There's my challenge for you. You still be making about four or five million dollars. You'd be all right. You would be all right. Like, just take your capital and and give it to uh, the whatever the Clemson collective is, and we're good, right? I mean, because then we're caring about the players. Oh, well, it's not about money. Then why are you getting paid, right? So so all of this stuff that we hear from college coaches, it is, it is, it sounds great. It does. But y'all aren't Dan Schmotzer. Y'all are not Jerry Josie. Because nobody knows who the hell the people are that coached me because they didn't do all this stuff like y'all do in the limelight getting paid $10 million a year. I don't hear Nick, I don't hear Nick and Kirby apologizing for the stuff. No, just take your money, bro, and go. But I mean, you can't have both. You can't have both. You don't like the playoff expanding? I mean, it's just what it is, man. It's just where we're at. It's just, it's just where we're at. If, yeah, you're going to get killed for this. You're getting killed because you stay, say stupid stuff too much, man. That, that's just all there is to it. You just say stuff that, like, either you don't think about it fully or whatever. I mean, I, I don't know. But some of this stuff, y'all are at the highest level of intercollegiate athletics. Please don't act like this isn't about money because the expansion of the playoff was totally about money, period. None of us are, I'm making money off these players. You're making money off these players. I've done NIL deals with guys. It's what it is. And I'm not hating on it, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and act like, you know, we got real problems because, you know, we don't care. We don't listen to kids. I listen to the kids that I work with. It worked out okay for them. 